Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody, come on, put your hands together and just continue in that worship. If you are chasing after God, huh? come on, I'm chasing after you. Come on and give him a great hand praise, a great hand praise. Come on, lift up your hands. Give him glory this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. The Bible says, all oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works unto the children of men. And so this morning, happy Pentecost Sunday. Happy Pentecost Sunday. I am so excited to stand before you this morning, grateful for what the Lord has done, grateful for what the Lord is doing, grateful for what the Lord has promised to do hallelujah and i reverence him this morning and i'm so grateful for all of you who have joined us welcome to saturation ministries global so excited that you have joined us this morning now we have a word from the lord so i want you to get your bibles get your bibles get your bibles and prepare your hearts and minds uh, to receive what the lord is speaking to us uh, this morning, this morning, I want to acknowledge all of the prayer generals that were that were with us over this past weekend, this past Friday and Saturday. We had our 12 hour virtual prayer from the threshing floor and it was amazing. It was dynamic and God and God was in the room. God was in the room. And he showed himself God in the midst of us. So I am so grateful. I hope that you had a chance to tune in. We were praying, sending up sacrifices of prayer and worship for 12 hours straight. Yeah. Uh, God, God is amazing. And we just believe that because of those prayers, that situations will turn, that God is going to move in the midst. We may not see it just yet in the earth realm, but I believe that our prayers, our prayers were coming up before God as a sweet smelling savor and that God's going to show up and God's going to manifest the very things that we petitioned him for and so grateful for that and uh, even this morning I know that there is even on this Pentecost Sunday there is unrest uh, in our country due to all of the things that are going on the injustices that we see and I believe that every pastor that stands in the pulpit today has the responsibility to speak up and speak out. I believe it would be negligent on our parts, uh, morally negligent, spiritually negligent, to not at least say something about what is going on in our cities. Right now, um, in our cities, there's rioting, there's protesting. Now, we may not agree with the way that it's being done, but we do agree that our voices must be heard. Ah, we do agree that we have to stand against injustice and institutionalized and systemic racism. Racism. We have to stand against it. And those of us who have a platform, whatever that platform may be, those of us who have a platform must stand on that platform and rebuke these injustices this racism we have to rebuke this spirit because it is a spirit it is a spirit behind what is happening in our country in our cities and so i stand with other clergy of the pastors who are speaking up and speaking out against what the enemy is doing and even right now i touch and agree with pastors and leaders and people who are praying and believing God to turn this situation around. We need the Lord today. We need the Lord because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle against principalities. We're wrestling against rulers of darkness. And we're wrestling against a spiritual wickedness in high places. And listen, church, we are the light. The only way that we can dispel this darkness is to be the light. Uh, that means that God is going to send us into secular places because we are the light. We must stand and be the light. The church must be the church. We've got to stand and we have to take a stance against. So I just want you to join with me just real quickly um, and pray um, because, because we refuse to just stand by and allow this spirit to continue to permeate. No, no, uh, we can trust and believe and pray. There is power in prayer. So now join with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
We approach you this morning, God, uh, in the spirit of humility. We approach you, Lord God, from a posture of privilege because you granted us access and even a posture of power because you said that you've given us power over all the power of the enemy. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the God that sees everything. You know what is going on even now. And as we have this platform, we stand against the workings of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Father, because you've given us power in your name, authority in your name, we decree in the name of Jesus that racism is coming down. That racism will not prevail in this country, in this world, in the name of Jesus. We believe it by faith. We cancel the assignment of the enemy in Jesus' name. We pull it up by the root, God. We curse it at the root. And we declare that racism will no longer bear fruit. It will not manifest fruit. We render it fruitless in the name of Jesus. And we break up every demonic communication uh, with this spirit in Jesus' name. We pull down the evil behind it, the spirit of evil behind it. We plead the blood of Ashanda. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. And we pray, Father, that you would raise us up, raise up leaders, pastors, those in the White House, those in the Senate, though everywhere there is leadership, those who are making decisions that God you would give us wisdom wisdom how do we counteract these attacks in the name of the Lord Jesus but we're coming in the way we know how we're coming in prayer in the name of Jesus and we decree and declare that God the promises of God are true we believe it, God, and we decree and declare that this spirit will stand down. And I, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke and bind you, Satan. The Lord is against you. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. And Father, we speak rest, a spirit of peace to overcome this country, to overcome our cities in the name of Jesus. Father, get the glory somehow, even in all of this that your name would be glorified, that people would turn to you because you are the answer, God. We need you, and we believe by faith that you are working on our behalf, and it is so in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I trust and believe. I trust and believe. And again, whatever platform we have, we're going to stand on the platform and speak against what the enemy is doing. We will not be silent. Church, we will not be a whisper when the world is speaking loudly. No, sir, no, ma'am. We will speak up. It is our responsibility and our obligation. Ah, and so I thank you for trusting that God is working it out. I thank you for believing and touching and agreeing with me in prayer. Now let's get to the word. Let's get to the word uh, on this Pentecost Sunday. The Lord has spoken something into my spirit. Uh, and so I want to share with you what the Lord is saying. So please turn with me to the book of Haggai, Old Testament scripture. The book of Haggai, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. So that's the third to the last uh, book in the Old Testament. Uh, turn to the book of Haggai and we're going to go to chapter 2. And then also, because we want to have the New Testament scripture, turn to the book of Acts, chapter 2. Come on, I hope you have your Bibles. Please, please give God your attention, your undivided attention uh, this morning. Haggai chapter 2, we're going to read verses 5 through 9. Haggai chapter 2. Uh... Let's see. According to the word that I covenant with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. Please, I want you to hear that. According to the word that I covenanted with you, meaning I promised you something. When you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. 
The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Please turn to the book of Acts, chapter 2. We're going to read verses 1 through 4. Hallelujah. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, the Ruach of God. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues and began to speak with other tongues and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Listen to the word. The Old Testament, I will fill this house with glory. The New Testament, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I will fill this house with glory, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. I need you to get that in your spirit. God has promised, I will fill this house with glory, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. So the title of the message that the Lord has given me to share with you this morning, Saturation, well worth the wait. Saturation, hey, well worth the wait. So Father, we again thank you for your goodness and your kindness. I ask now, Father, for your anointing that you would rest upon me. Uh, and give me the anointing to speak this word as you have given it to me in my spirit. Pray that as this word goes out, that Father, you would help us to hold on to what you have promised and to believe in spite of whatever the circumstances are, that your word is still sure and your word is still true. The blessings of God be upon your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Saturation, well worth the wait. The ability to wait is often a challenge of our discipline and our expectancy. Uh, most of us are annoyed or bothered by having to wait. We want immediate gratification, immediate service, and most of us want an immediate answer to our prayers. The ability to wait. Waiting is often, is often frustrating. It exposes our impatience and it frustrates our spirit. We, we don't like waiting. Uh, uh, waiting means we have to delay an action until someone or something arrives. Waiting means we have to delay an action until something happens. Waiting means we have to remain in readiness for a purpose. All of these definitions were the reasons why the disciples were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. They were told to wait. Yeah, come on here. Uh, I know that some of you, some of you have been told to wait, to wait. Please note that prior to this day, prior to this day of Pentecost, Jesus, after his resurrection, had shown himself for 40 days prior to his ascension into heaven. After his resurrection, Easter, he gave a commission to his disciples and a promise. I need you to get it. He gave a commission and he gave a promise. If God ever gives you a commission, if God ever gives you a charge, the commission is given for purpose and with promise, with promise promise. So after the resurrection of Jesus, Matthew, the apostle records the great commission to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which by the way is the name Jesus. And he concludes the commission with lo, 
I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's the promise. He gave the commission and he gave them the promise. The Apostle Luke records the commission in chapter 24 as Jesus tells his disciples that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, the name of Jesus, among all nations. And verse 49 says, And behold, listen, I will send the promise. There it is, the commission and the promise. I will send the promise of my Father upon you. But wait, but wait in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Uh, uh, Jesus says, I'm giving you the commission to go. But before you go, wait for the promise. Because you're going to need some power to perform your purpose. I need you to hear God today. Uh, the work that I have commissioned you to do requires a different agency for completion. Listen, uh, there's a different kind of power that you're going to need in order to produce. You're going to need some power. Uh, it's a different kind of agency, a different kind of organization within. It's a different kind of power. So the disciples, they had to wait. They had to wait. The disciples had to delay their action for something or someone to arrive. They had to delay their action for something else to happen first. They had to remain in readiness for a purpose. Oh, but the promise was well worth the wait. So, so what is the wait all about? What, what is the power that they were told to wait for? Why did they have to wait in Jerusalem? Well, in Jerusalem, uh, people from all nations had gathered for the feast the Jews call Shuvot. It's the Shuvot feast that commemorated the giving of the law or the Torah to Israel on the 50th day after the Passover, after the exodus out of Egypt. The Shavuot represented the recognition of Israel as the chosen people of God who surrendered to the law of God, listen, in order to live acceptable unto him. They would follow and submit to the law as an organized and established people. Pentecost is the Greek word for Shavuot. Uh, Pentecost is from the Greek word Pentecoste, which means 50th. Pentecost in the New Testament represents the 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We call it Easter. It is 50 days after Easter. Remember, Jesus had shown himself for 40 days after the resurrection. The Bible says with many infallible proofs, he then ascended back to heaven to sit on the right hand of the Father or his position of power. Uh, as promised, as promised, and I need you to hear that as promised, he sent the power that he commanded the disciples to wait for 10 days later. The day of Pentecost was 10 days after the ascension of Jesus. He was with them for 40 days, he ascended, and 10 days afterwards, there was the day of Pentecost, 50 days. Uh, so Pentecost in the New Testament was 50 days after the resurrection, just as the Shavuot was 50 days after the Passover in the Old Testament. Uh, Shavuot it commemorates the law that enabled the people of God to know how to please God. That was the Old Pentecost, Pentecost, this commemorates the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Listen, the day of Pentecost ushers in a new dispensation, the dispensation of grace that now enables and empowers the people to please God. Uh, listen, 
Uh, in the old, it was the law that was given so that you would know how to please God. After the day of Pentecost, it's the Spirit of God that is given so that you can now be empowered to please God. Uh, therefore, the significance of waiting in Jerusalem, the believers who celebrated the Old Testament dispensation now have the opportunity to participate and become partakers of the new dispensation. <laughs> Did you hear me? So on this 50th day, on this 50th day, the Bible says that the disciples who had been told to wait were with one accord, waiting with expectation. Waiting with expectation. So, so let's go to our New Testament text. In the book of Acts, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Remember, uh, John said you're going to be baptized uh, with fire. Uh, and it sat upon each of them. And the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were filled. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost. They experienced a saturation that was well worth the wait. This, this saturation, this pour of the Spirit of God was the empowering of the people that was promised. That was promised. It was the new agency necessary for the commission to be carried out. Listen to God again. God had given them a commission, a command to go ye therefore into all the nations. He had given this commission with promise. He keeps emphasizing with promise. A promise that he would be with them always. Now, how could he be with them always if he had ascended back to heaven? What happened on the day of Pentecost now provided the opportunity and the privilege for his spirit to not only remain with the disciples, but to dwell in the disciples. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God is not just with me, but God, but God dwells, God dwells in me. And, and on this Pentecost Sunday, the commemorative celebration of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, the commemorative celebration of the initiation of the true church of the living God. I wanted to preach a message about the experience of the disciples being baptized and saturated in the Holy Ghost. I wanted to preach a message emphasizing pneumatology or the theological doctrine of the Holy Ghost. I wanted to preach a message emphasizing the poor, the poor, and the outpour and the power that we now have because of the work of the Holy Ghost within us. Uh, I wanted to preach. I wanted to preach that. Uh, but God told me that the emphasis today, even on Pentecost Sunday, that the emphasis on today is not on the celebration of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The emphasis of this message today it's not on the speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance, even though I'm so glad I got the tongue-talking kind of Holy Ghost. The emphasis is not even on the fact that God now dwells in us and not just on us. Uh, God said, emphasize to the people today, listen, that I am a promise keeper. God said, emphasize to the people that they have been waiting on a promise. So make sure that today you tell them, Maya, that I am a promise keeper. God said, tell the people that the saturation of the Holy Ghost was the manifestation of a promise, of a promise. Tell the people, I am a promise keeper. Keeper, can you just shout for me? Write it in the comments. God is a promise keeper. 
I want you to speak it out of your mouth because remember, I want you to put it in the atmosphere. Tell yourself, tell anybody else in the room. Look at him and tell him, God is a promise keeper. God, God is a promise keeper. There are some of you who have been waiting for the fulfillment of a promise. I, I'm waiting on God. I, I, there are some things that God has put in my spirit. There are some things that I have laid on the altar. Uh, there are some things that I am needing God to do. Uh, and I'm in the waiting process. Listen. God says no matter how long you've been waiting. I'm not slack concerning my promise. He is a promise keeper. Uh, I, again, I wanted to preach that message about uh, the Shekinah glory. I wanted to preach. I wanted to preach about the Holy Ghost and the power coming down. I wanted to preach about that, but God said, no, tell them to remember, I am a promise keeper. So, so the outpouring of the Holy Ghost was a promise that the disciples had to wait for. But the wait gave them the opportunity to embrace the fact that God is a keeper of his word. That God is a promise keeper. I, I don't believe that the disciples knew they would have to wait for 10 days to receive the promise. Uh, nobody likes to wait. Uh, but again, the saturation that they received was well worth the wait. Listen, because now they had the power to perform their purpose. I can imagine that possibly in their waiting that they had to encourage one another, but they were able to encourage one another based upon the fact that Jesus had already proven that he is a promise keeper. And as much as he told them before the crucifixion that he was going to rise again. Now they have had infallible proof for 40 days. They have had infallible proof that Jesus was yet alive. Listen, he kept his promise. I, I just want to encourage you that even though you may be waiting on a promise from God, God has already given you infallible proofs that he is a promise keeper. I believe that God has already proven himself trustworthy. <laughs> so then, so then, so then the Holy Ghost. That the disciples were told to wait for. This, this, this Holy Ghost. This Holy Ghost who is the comforter. According to John 16, 7. This Holy Ghost who is the dunamis dynamite power of God. According to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. This Holy Ghost who is the spirit of power. The spirit of love and a sound mind. According to 2 Timothy 1, 7. This Holy Ghost, who is the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel, the Spirit of might, the Spirit of knowledge, and the Spirit of the fear or the reverence of the Lord, according to Isaiah 11:2. This Holy Ghost, who is the Spirit of truth, that leads and guides us into all truth and shows us things to come according to John 16, 13. This Holy Ghost who reveals the mysteries and the mind of God according to 1 Corinthians 2, 10. This Holy Ghost, this, this Holy Ghost who is necessary for entrance into the kingdom of God according to John 3, 5. This Holy Ghost has the power, listen, to produce. This Holy Ghost who has the power to produce koinonia or communion or community. Listen, that crosses races, crosses classes, crosses culture. According to Acts 2.41, when 3,000 souls from all nations, listen, were added to the church in just one day. Yeah. Uh, didn't matter where they came from, didn't matter which language they spoke, 3,000 souls were added to the church in one day because of the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen, God, we need the Holy Ghost to saturate this country and send souls, God, send souls. It's the Holy Ghost that can bring us together. It's the Holy Ghost that crosses over racism, sexism, classism. It doesn't matter, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost has that power. Um, this Holy Ghost, 
that was poured out on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. This outpouring was the promise. It was the promise recorded in Joel 2.28 when God said he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and the handmaids will I pour out my spirit. It was a saturation well worth the wait. This outpouring was the promise that Isaiah records in the 44th chapter and verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. And floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. This Holy Ghost, this, this Holy Ghost was and is the manifestation of a promise, of a promise. This saturation was the manifestation of a promise that was well worth the wait. Can you shout saturation? Well worth the wait. Put it in the comments. Saturation. Well worth the wait. God says, listen, I'm not slack concerning my promises. If I make you a promise, you can count on me to keep my word. Even if you have to wait on it. Uh, I need you to get this, what the Lord is speaking today. Uh, just trust and believe that if I cause you to wait, that there is purpose in the wait. Uh, uh, just believe and trust me that I may not come when you think so. Uh, I, I may not come when you want me to, but my timing is perfect. Uh, uh, I'm always on time. It, it's my time, my timing for my purpose. Uh, God says, just trust me. Uh, just trust me. Uh, so, 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 so then uh, the disciples were saturated. They were filled full. They were baptized. They were filled full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, they could testify now like the Old Testament prophet Micah. Truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Listen, the promise was fulfilled. And it was worth the wait. But it's sometimes uh, uh, that weight, that, that, that weight that gives us problems because we don't like to wait. We, we don't like to wait. So, 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 so let's, let, let's just consider the Old Testament text. God uses the prophet Haggai to pin the words of encouragement to the remnant of people. Please listen. God always has a remnant no matter what dispensation we are in God always has a remnant I, I hope that you are a part of the remnant today uh, uh, so God had Haggai pin words of encouragement uh, because the remnant the remnant had become discouraged in rebuilding the temple is there anybody who has ever been discouraged yeah. anybody who has ever been disappointed yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody uh, who was discouraged right now because of the conditions that we're facing. Anybody tired? Any, any, anybody, anybody angry? Yeah. Uh, uh, when we see the conditions, um, um, there, there, there is a spirit of anger that oftentimes rises up in us uh, because we're tired of what is going on. We're tired of systemic race. We're tired of it. Uh, uh, we're tired of it and we're angry about it. Uh, uh, that's why we have to speak. And uh, that's why we have to use our voices, our intellect, our power. Because we do have power. Haggai is encouraging the people to complete the temple. That was their commission. Their commission. So that the promise of the glory. Yeah, the promise of the glory of the Lord could be revealed. The people were discouraged. Because they believed that what they were building could never be as glorious as the previous temple. Hear me? Can I please suggest real quickly that the more you compare yourself to others, the more discouraged you will become or remain. So just stay focused on what the Lord has commissioned you to do. Allow God to process you through the seasons and move you from faith to faith and from glory to glory. So, so Haggai reminds the discouraged remnant. 
yeah, about the original promises of God and assures them that even though there is a season of waiting, a season of building, a season of preparation, a season of unrest, the promise of God is still sure. I need you to get that in your spirit. The promise of God is still sure. The remnant was discouraged because the process in building the temple was hard. Mm -hmm. uh, the process of waiting to see the results of the temple was hard. The consistency and the commitment to maintain the promise in the midst of challenge was hard. The ability to maintain focus in the midst of haters and hostility and injustices was hard. Nevertheless, can you shout nevertheless? Nevertheless, Haggai tells the people that God will shake all the nations. I think that's what God is doing right now. Uh, God will shake all the nations. And listen, the Bible says, and the desire of all nations shall come shall come. Uh, uh, the desire of all nations shall come. This desire of all nations is the prophetic messianic promise. I, I, I need you to get, this is what Haggai says. Uh, the desire of all nations, that is the prophetic messianic promise. It's the promise that the Messiah is coming, Jesus the Christ. He is the desire of all nations, even though the nations don't even realize it. Uh, uh, he is, Jesus, is uh, the desire of every nation, even though they reject him. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he is the desire of every nation, even though they refuse to recognize him as the ultimate one who reigns and who rules. This word, the, this desire, this desire, can also be translated as treasure, as treasure. So Haggai says to says the treasure of all nations will come. Well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, that we have this treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Uh, uh, this treasure, this Jesus, now dwells on the inside of earthen vessels because we are now the temple of the living God. Listen. Haggai prophesies that this promised Messiah is going to fill the house with glory. Fill the house with his manifest presence. In other words, this Messiah is going to fill the house with his own spirit. Uh, not only that, not only that, this glory, this manifest presence, what is referred to as the Shekinah glory. This indwelling presence of God. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, shall be expressed in a greater manifestation than the former ways. Uh, see, the glory was uh, manifest in the Ark of the Covenant, in the temple building, in an architectural building. Uh, uh, then, after a period of waiting, the glory was manifest and evident in Jesus Christ himself who walked with the people doing miracle signs and wonders. Then, after a period of waiting, you got to get this wait part. See, see this, it requires a period of waiting. Then after a period of waiting, after the death, burial, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus, this same glory was manifest by the outpouring and the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. What happened on the day of Pentecost? So, so Pastor K, what are you saying? What, 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 what are you saying? Listen, my assignment today, remember I told you I wanted to preach about the Holy Ghost, the fire coming down, the tongue talking Holy Ghost. I want to preach about it. I want to preach about it. But the Lord wouldn't let me. Listen, I'm assigned to tell you today that I know you've been waiting. God knows you've been waiting. And in your waiting, you've been discouraged. Mm -hmm. In your waiting, You've been challenged. In your waiting, you feel like giving up. Uh, but I told you, remind you that he is a promise keeper. Please, please, please hear me. Just like God used Haggai to tell the remnant that their ladder shall be greater. Ah. 
than their former that God, that God is using me today as a prophetic voice to tell you that your latter shall be greater than your former. Your weight is only the preparation for the manifestation of your promise. And every time, listen, every time the enemy tries to convince you that God is not going to keep his word, I want you to lift your hand. I want you to lift your hand and worship in worship. And I want you to say just these five words. Lift your hand in worship. I want you to say five words. God is a promise keeper. He said, Carla, tell them to just say five words and to repeat it until they get it in their spirit. God is a promise keeper. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Can you please testify? God is a promise keeper. No matter how long you have to wait, God is a promise keeper. Every time you feel a little discouraged because of the weight, can you lift your hands and say five words? God is a promise keeper. When they deny the loan you need it for your house, can you just say God is a promise keeper? When our kids are still acting up, uh, God is a promise keeper. Even in the midst of social injustice, God, you're not shy. God is, God is, God is a promise keeper. He's a promise keeper. If he promised it, it's going to come to pass. Uh, so when you get a little tired in the way, repeat those five words. God is a promise keeper. God is a promise keeper. Please say it out loud with me right now. Come on, let's get some practice. God is a promise keeper. Come on, uh, uh, I can hear my sister, uh, my sister Lady Karen. Uh, she might even put it to us song. God is a promise keeper. <laughs> Whatever you've got to do, I need you to get it in your spirit that God is. He is. He is. God is. God is a promise keeper. He's not going to let his word fall to the ground. If he has given you a promise in spite of what we're going through, pandemic, calamity, crisis, murder, in spite of what we're going through, God is. Yeah. God is a promise keeper. And, and, and then if those five words, if those five words get a little old to you, I want you to, I want to give you five more words to say. Repeat it after me. My ladder shall be greater. Yeah. Woo. Ha -ha. My ladder shall be greater. When, when the enemy tries to come in like a flood, I want you to tell the devil, my ladder shall be greater. My ladder shall, shall be greater. Uh, I know I'm in the holding process. I know I'm waiting right now. Uh, but my promise, my promise is coming to pass. Why? Because God is a promise keeper. Uh, why? Why? Because my ladder shall be greater. I'm not. I'm not gonna look at my circumstance and compare it to my past. Mm -mm. Uh, no, no. I'm not gonna look back because I'm only gonna look forward. Because why? Uh, my ladder. My ladder. My what's coming up next? Eh, it's gonna be greater than what was. Uh, I need you to believe me. Saturation. 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 Uh, listen to God. Listen to God. Saturation. Well worth the wait. Well, well worth the wait. The baptism of the Holy Ghost was a promise. Well worth the wait. Yes, it was the outpouring of the Spirit of God, but it was a promise. I need you to get that part. It was a promise that God made. And this promise was well, it was well worth the wait. Uh, the saturation of the Holy Ghost was a promise well worth the wait. The saturation was a promise. Get it, please hear me. Saturation Ministries family, listen. Saturation is a promise. Please hear me. Huh? Saturation is a promise well worth the wait. Uh, uh, because God is a promise keeper. Saturation is a promise. Well worth the wait because our ladder shall be greater. Saturation, saturation, saturation. God's talking to you. What we're waiting for is well worth the wait because God is a promise keeper. Saturation, 
saturation. Do you hear me? Uh, what we're believing God for is well worth the wait. <laughs> because God is a promise keeper. Saturation. <laughs> I promise is well worth the wait because God is. Uh, God is a promise keeper. Saturation, saturation, saturation. Fear not. Uh, because God is a promise keeper. Saturation. Uh, we are well worth the wait. Saturation. Our ladder shall be greater than the former. Well, well, I, I, I'm done. I, I, I'm done with the message. I can't even say any more uh, because God just wanted me to tell you and to remind you that God is a promise keeper. And when he performs the promise, it will be well worth the wait. Deba, whatever it is that you have been asking God for, whatever it is that he has promised you, listen, he promised that we are the head and not the tail. God is a promise keeper. Uh, he promised that he will supply our every need according to his riches in glory. Uh, God is a promise keeper. He promised, listen, that he would give us houses and land that we did not even build. Hey, uh, he is a promise keeper. He promised that the seed of the righteous would be delivered. He is a promise keeper. I don't care how our kids may be acting right now. God promised that the seed of the righteous is delivered and set free. Uh, God is a promise keeper. God said, my word cannot return unto me void. He is. He is. He is a promise keeper. So then, so then whatever it is you're waiting for, the disciples waited for 10 days. Uh, they waited in an upper room. They waited, they waited because God told them to wait. God gave them a commission, but he also gave them a promise. So whatever it is that God has commissioned you to do, God says, I'm not, I have not only given you the commission, but I have also given you a promise that I will be with you always. How God? Because, because I no longer have to be just with you walking side by side. Eh. Uh, you are now my temple, so I now have the awesome privilege to be in you. Eh. I, I, I'm dwelling in you so that wherever you go, uh, I am with you. Whatever circumstance you face, I am with you. Whether you're in the valley, I am with you. On the mountaintop, I am with you because, because now I'm dwelling. You now have my abiding presence. Just don't pick me up when you want. I'm with you always. I'm with you when it's good and I'm with you when it's bad. I'm with you when they say yes and I'm with you when they reject you. I am a promise keeper. I am with you. I'm dwelling on the inside. I am abiding with you. And I promise that I will never leave nor forsake you. That's a promise from God. And God is. God is a promise. He's a promise keeper. Uh, I said I was done right, so this is my second close, y'all. Uh, hallelujah. God is. He's a promise keeper. I know it's just a simple message. It's just five words. Uh, but the spirit of those five words says, I believe God over everything. Is what we say. Saturation. Did you hear God talking to us? Saturation is well worth our wait. Yeah. Uh, please don't get discouraged. Please, please, please don't stop believing. It's well worth the wait. Uh, that God's going to do the miraculous. God's going to use saturation to saturate. Ah, come on. God is a promise keeper. He said it. He said it. I, I, I didn't say it. I know I'm the pastor. I'm just the voice uh, sharing with you what God has spoken. Uh, God said he's going to use saturation to saturate the globe. Listen, I don't know how he's going to do it. It's beyond our means, but it's not beyond our faith. <laughs> Come on here. God is. God is a promise keeper. It's not about us. We didn't make the promise. God made the promise. Therefore, God will back up his own word. And when you speak with God spoke, 
He will back you up because God is. God is a promise keeper. So please, on this day of Pentecost, yes, we commemorate the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And I pray and trust and believe that you have experienced the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. If you have not, listen, the very first message that Peter preached after the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, he preached the message and the people were pricked in their heart. And they said, what must I do? What must I do to be saved? And the first thing Peter said was repent. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. And here's the promise, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So if you have not received that gift uh, you can receive that gift today. Uh, if you've been waiting on the gift, uh, your time is today. You can receive it right now. God, God will come into your house. Listen, through this phone, through, listen, through the airways, God, listen. God's not restricted. God walked through walls. Hey, uh, uh, he's not restricted. He will come right where you are. If you just lift up your hands and say, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. I want the tongue-talking kind. I, I want the same experience that the disciples had. Uh, because you know some folks say you don't have to speak in tongues. Eh, well, maybe, maybe. But I want the experience that was on the day of Pentecost. Eh, I want that experience. I want God to fill me with the Holy Ghost, the tongue-talking kind. That's what they did. That's what I want. And God is a promise keeper. So if you want the Holy Ghost, that's a promise unto you and to your sons, and to your daughters. It's a promise. God is a promise keeper. So again, I trust that on this Pentecost Sunday, not only will you receive the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, but you would recognize that that saturation that they received was a promise from God. God is a promise keeper. Whatever he has promised you, he is a promise keeper. Keeper, can you say it one more time? God is a promise keeper. Just five words. Yeah. God is a promise keeper. My ladder will be greater because God promised and he's not slack concerning his promise. He is able to do what he has promised he would do. And I need you to take that away from this message today. God is a promise keeper. I know you might be waiting, and I know you might be uncomfortable in the wait. Yeah, we get uncomfortable, we get frustrated, we get upset. But please remember, God, God is a promise keeper. He gave the disciples a commission, but he told the disciples to wait on the power in order to complete the commission. The significance of his power, this Holy Ghost, God himself, is that you cannot do the fullness of the work without the fullness of the power. <laughs> so come on here. God is a promise keeper. He's promised to give you his abiding presence. You need it. In this day and time, you need the abiding presence of God. Why? Because remember, he is the Prince of Peace. We need peace right now. Woo! We need peace. So I encourage you. Speak it. God is a promise keeper. Whatever he has promised you, it is coming to pass. Your ladder shall be greater. It's going to be great. It's going to be big. Yeah. Saturation. Well worth the wait. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you have spoken into our spirit today. We thank you that, God, you are trustworthy, that by many infallible proofs you have already demonstrate your, demonstrated your faithfulness to us. And so even on this Pentecost Sunday, we speak it in our own spirit and into the atmosphere. God is a promise keeper that no matter what we're facing right now, we believe God. Yeah, And no matter what the condition is, we believe God over everything. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you, Lord God, would blanket, 
this earth, this world with your spirit in the name of Jesus. We call for the winds from the north, south, east, and west, ah, the spirit of God, the Ruach of God to blow over this country, over these nations, and that God, because of your spirit, there will be peace. Ah. We declare and decree peace, be still. We speak it in the name of Jesus. Ah. And God, give us the wisdom. Give us the help that we need to continue to wait. If we have to wait, help us, God, to wait on the Lord and to be of good courage. Strengthen our hearts according to your word. And God, we will trust and believe you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <laughs> I'm excited because God is a promise keeper. God bless you today. Be encouraged no matter what the situation is. God told me to tell you he is a promise keeper. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday for the Equip uh, Bible class, the, the Equip School of Ministry. And on next Sunday, maybe the Lord will let me preach about that Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't know, but I trust God. He is a promise keeper. And I'm going to encourage you even uh, to give and to sow into the ministry. I'm giving God what we call a Pentecost offering today. Pentecost means 50. So I encourage any of you who can. I know that we're in a time of crisis, so many of you may not be able to. But uh, God is a promise keeper. So I'm going to plant and I'm going to sow today a Pentecost offering. A Pentecost offering of $50. And if, for those of you who can't, the Lord told me to tell you, listen, you can give a Pentecost sacrifice this week. So if you can't give it monetarily, take 50 minutes and read his word. Intentional, 50 minutes. Take 50 minutes and call people on the phone and just give them encouragement. Yeah. Take 50 minutes and read his word. You can give a $50 sacrifice. doesn't have to be money. Just give God 50 minutes of your time, intentional time this week. God bless you on this day of Pentecost. Go with God and be encouraged. God is a promise keeper. Love and blessings, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Ha! Ah, my name is Victory. Yes, sir.